If you're watching this video, there's a good chance that you're taking a course in formal logic. And if you've gotten to that point in the semester where your professor has started writing letters on the board with arrows and whatnot, you might start wondering, how exactly is this supposed to be the critical reasoning stuff that I was told that this class is going to be? And you might wonder what the point of a formal system is. So I'm making this video because I'd like to shed some light on what the purpose of formal logic systems is and, uh, you know, what they're useful for, right? What, what makes them valuable? And probably the best place to start is just by talking about inferences. We make inferences all the time. So suppose that you walk outside and you notice that it's really, really humid out and there's, you know, puddles all over the ground and the grass is wet. You might infer that it's been raining. And I mean, it's not the most interesting inference, but it is an inference. So what exactly is it that makes that an inference? An inference is what happens when you grab some information that you already had and you extract something new from it, right? And it's something new that you are justified in believing, right? So some inferences are of course better than others and humans are prone to making mistakes all the time. But the point remains, whenever we go ahead and we try to get some new information out of some previously existing information that we had, what we've just done is try at least to make an inference. The purpose of a formal logic system is to represent the inferential moves that we make, specifically because we're interested in capturing exactly what it means to make an inference. If we have a really good formal system, we should be capable of representing exactly the instances when an inference has been successful. And in fact, most formal logic systems give you tools in order to evaluate when a successful inference has been made. And this is where the value of formal systems comes into play. Formal systems can be used for all sorts of stuff. One of the main uh, uses is just to test arguments for validity. So and we'll, we'll talk about what validity is later on, but let's just for now say that it tests for when an inference has actually been successful. If you have a formal system of logic, you can represent any argument and you can show whether the premises of that argument actually entail the conclusion that the argument intends to entail. And that's remarkably powerful. And there are a variety of formal logic systems, uh, some of which are exceedingly powerful and are really, really good at representing uh, when it is that we make inferential connections and can tell us whether we've been successful in doing so. Another uh, value of these formal systems is the following. Natural language is actually extremely messy, right? And by natural language, I mean the language that we typically speak. And in our case, it would be English, but of course, uh, any language that's spoken by uh, any society would count. Uh, but natural language is full of distractions, right? Natural language is, is full of all sorts of stuff that we throw in there, rhetorical devices, appeals to things that don't matter, anecdotes, what have you, things that aren't really inferential. And one of the, one of the uh, valuable features of a formal system is that we get to just get rid of all of those distractions. We can just focus on the thing that really matters, which is just, do these premises actually entail this conclusion? That's the thing that we really care about. Now, how exactly is it that a formal system does this? You may have already noticed that in your classes, your professor use, uses symbols, right? So one of the ways that this is done, or rather I should say the way that formal systems work is by representing natural language through symbols. So for instance, if you're doing sentence logic, which is taught in just about every logic class uh, at, at the introductory level in most universities, you might notice that sentences are represented with uh, capital letters. And this is just how we can get rid of the stuff we don't care about. Now, this comes at a cost, and I'll get to that in a second. Uh, but the main way that we do logic is by symbolizing language. So we just turn all of the propositions in a language into statement letters, and then we'll represent uh, you know, logical moves with symbols like arrows and, and dots and stuff. And, and I'll talk about that in my future videos, and you'll, of course, learn about it in your classes. Uh, but that's just how, it, how a formal system works. You represent language in a far less cluttered, far cleaner, far more well-structured manner by using all of these symbols. Now, here's where the strengths come in. If you've done this successfully, 
if you grab an argument and you symbolize it so that you can represent all of the logical connections, you, what you're going to end up with is a really vivid representation of an argument that can show you exactly how it is that you move from the premises down to the conclusion. Furthermore, it allows you to test arguments with mathematical precision, right? In fact, you'll notice that a lot of what you do in a logic class looks a whole lot like mathematics, and that is by design because the idea is to be capable of testing these arguments to know with certainty whether the arguments are good. Where good is a term of art, logicians use different terms that I'll talk about in later videos as well. Now, those are the strengths of these logical systems, but I'd like to end this video by talking about some of the weaknesses to bear in mind. So in your logic classes, the as I just said, the, the language you're likeliest to learn is statement logic. And, and it comes by a few names, statement logic, sentence logic, propositional logic. Those are usually the, the three uh, ways that this system is referred to. Uh, it's a great system for introducing students to logic. It comes with a set of weaknesses. For instance, as I just said earlier, uh, a whole sentence is represented with just a single capital letter. And you might worry that that's not really going to capture everything that goes on uh, in a sentence, right? And that, that would be exactly right. There are, of course, more advanced systems where once you've mastered set sentence logic, you'll be ready to learn these more advanced systems that actually capture some of what's going on inside of sentences. And there are even stronger systems that can capture even more than that. All of this is to say the whole point of a formal system is to capture the thing we care most about when it comes to logic, and that's reasoning, right? That's that's the inference stuff. That's the stuff we care about. And logic systems are just the, the best tool that we have for representing that, testing it, uh, capturing it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully you now understand what the purpose of these systems is and what it is that makes them valuable. And anyone who masters logic, who masters formal logic, who knows how to represent these systems is going to become far better at reasoning because you'll be less prone to getting distracted, uh, making strange mistakes, falling into logical fallacies and all of that good stuff. Uh, so stick around. I'll be posting a lot more videos where we'll talk about these formal systems and exactly uh, how to use them and you know how to, how to use them to test for stuff and how to write the symbols and all of that good stuff. So um, I look forward to seeing you around.